So today we're learning about James Rizzi, an American pop artist from Brooklyn, New York. He's famous for drawing silly looking birds and other things like buildings and suns and moons in a cartoon way. Everything usually has eyes or it is um, a little bit goofier than what you would normally see. So we're going to make a whole bunch of silly birds today on our paper. So we have a long skinny piece of paper. You're also going to need watercolor, pencil to start, oil pastel for your lines, and a water cup. You notice I have two different paintbrushes in here. Some things might need a bigger paintbrush and some things might need a smaller paintbrush. So you can decide which one works best for you. These are the fuzzy paintbrushes because they are watercolor. The ones that are a little bit harder are for acrylic or tempera and we're just using watercolor today. Okay, so to start I'm going to be drawing my birds across the piece of paper. I should have room for about six birds. So to start your birds, your first thing you're going to do is draw a little cone. This is its beak. The beak is kind of big, facing down. Then the top is almost like an ice cream scoop top. Okay. The eyes are very big and will be white in the middle of their faces. Pupils. And these little birds have tiny nose holes. Sometimes they even have little hair. <laughs> And their bodies are a little goofy, almost like a U shape, but has a point where the tail is. We're going to start out by making a U from its face. We're going to make it come up. So it's almost on an angle. And you can make its tail a bunch of different ways, and I'll show you on each word, uh, in each bird. This one's going to be just a little curve. And the next one might be a little different. Their legs are the fun part. You can make them going any way you want. You can make them just straight. You can make them bend their knees or cross their legs. This one I'm just going to have straight legged. Little bird feet. Okay, so I have room for more birds. I'm going to put another one right next to him. Same thing, start out with the beak. This one's head's going to be turned a little bit if you can see it's on an angle. Didn't do that on purpose, but happy accident. Head, little hair, eyes, nose holes and here is a different kind of body. So I'm going to make the tail come this way this time. So I'm going to come like this. I'm going to kind of angle it. So instead of making it a curve all the way, I made it have a little angle. Make this tail come up a little bit more. And I'm going to have this one be angled all the way. He's a little bigger than the other one. Now I'm going to make these legs cross. So this leg's going to go straight and this one is actually going to come across like that. Like he's dancing. Alright, my next bird. Beak. Head. This one's got a tiny head. Eyes. Hair. And I only have mine taped so that it doesn't wiggle. You won't tape yours to your table. And I'm going to make this one's tail come back this direction. It's a little skinnier. He's going to have a tiny tail. It's a little skinny. And this one's legs are going to be, one's going to be straight. And the other one is going to be bent, very silly, in like that. Kind of looks like he's doing the potty dance. <laughs> All right, next bird. Head. You can do the head first if you want, or the beak you choose. Usually I find that doing the beak is a little bit easier. Eyes. Hair. Body. And this one's legs I'm going to have coming out from the middle. Try to make each of their legs do something a little different. So, I've got four. I'm trying to fit two more birds in there if I can. If you can only fit five, that's fine, but five or six is where you want to be. Beak. Head. It's got a big brain. Eyes. Oops, I forgot my nose holes on this one. 
make this one's tail go this way. These both went that way, but that's okay. It depends on what you want. You could have all their tails go the same direction or switch them up. All right, so this one's going to go this way. Make him a little angly. There we go. A little bit shorter. This one's legs I'm going to have cross the other direction. So that one made like almost a four this way. I'm going to make this one cross this way. Alright, and last but not least, my last bird. Try to fit him in here. He might be a little skinny. That's okay. You notice I'm forgetting a few things, but I can go back and do that before I do my oil pastel. I'm going to make this one's tail go this way too. And he is going to be straight legged as well. Okay, last thing. So I got all my birds. Now I'm going to give them a little bit of a feather. So James Rizzi has this kind of silly feather in the front. It's pretty much just a wavy line on their bellies. Right. So after you're done with that, and you don't forget your name, so try to fit your name somewhere over here. Or the back, either one. You're going to go over all of your lines with oil pastel. So the oil pastel is just going on the bird lines or the pencil lines that I did before. We don't want it to go everywhere, so you want to be very careful when you do it. Tracing it, covering up all that pencil. Round his eyes. His nose holes, his little hair. Feathers and his feet. And you're going to do that to every bird. Once you've oil passed out all of your birds, you're going to start to paint. Your birds are all going to be different colors. So you don't want to put a red bird next to a red bird. You could do the rainbow, you would switch it up, you do a warm or a hot color, a cold color, hot color, cold color, hot color, cold color. It's up to you. So the birds are kind of small, so you might want to use a smaller paintbrush, or if you're very careful, you can use the big one. So I'm going to start by doing a red bird. Just a little paint on the end of my paintbrush. I want to keep those eyes white, so I need to be very careful when I go around his eyes. That oil pastel is going to create a barrier, so it shouldn't go in there if you're careful. If you get too wild or crazy or you're talking too much, you might get it in its eyes. Around his beak. His beak is even the same color as his face. That's what James Rizzi did. Or as his head. Okay, so we got his head. Now his body will be the same color as the head. So it's okay if this line, if I go over this line right here in the beak, but around his body, you want to make sure you stay inside the lines. So I go really slow around the outside and faster towards the inside. Wash my paintbrush out, pick a new color. I'm going to do purple next. Until all of your birds are painted. So that oil pastel really helps because it's making it so it's not super messy in it. The oil pastel repels the watercolor so the watercolor stays in place. If you didn't push very hard with your oil pastels, it's not going to work as well. So you want to make sure that your lines are pretty dark to make that barrier or cage for your watercolor to stay inside. All right, making sure there's no white spots. The only white spot on the bird is its eyes. All right, keep going until you get all your birds painted. 
Once you're done with your birds, you're going to be painting your background. And James Rizzi's painting actually had kind of a magenta background. Um, if you choose not to do magenta, that's fine, but you don't want your background to be any of the same colors as your birds. So think about that ahead of time. If my background's going to be blue, I can't have a blue bird. All right, so I'm gonna use this magenta color. And I'm gonna paint around all of my birds so that I don't mix up the two colors. I want to make sure that my bird stays bright and that my background stays away with that barrier color. Remember if your water cup gets gross, you can always fill it up with clean water halfway if you'd like. All right, so I'm gonna show you some really cool techniques here. If you notice, I'm only painting around one bird at a time. So I'm going to get to kind of about halfway between the two birds, and I'm going to do some cool speckle techniques. So James Rizzi has really colorful backgrounds, so magenta wouldn't be good enough. You'd have to add more. So what you could do is you could take a little red, or a little orange, or a little yellow, anything that kind of goes with that color, your background color, that's not going to turn brown and you put a couple little speckles or dots around your bird and that's going to give it a really cool technique once it starts to blend together okay so wash it off get more magenta and continue so I can go right over those legs because there's no color in them just black and if I cover up some of those dots that I made, that's okay. It's just going to make my magenta a little more red for my background in spots. So going very carefully. Maybe some of these small parts would be good to use a smaller paintbrush if you feel more comfortable with that. But think about it. Smaller paintbrush, more time it's going to take you to do. Okay, I got around that bird. Now maybe I'm going to do a couple more orange ones or some orange ones. I did red before some orange ones here. I could do red the whole way. I could add a couple red now. So it's red and orange. It's up to you. I could do some more magenta. If you notice in my bird, I forgot to tell you guys about this, that it kind of turned a weird yellow. Yellow green. That's because someone did not wash their paintbrush off before they painted or got the yellow. So the yellow has green in it. So be careful with that so that doesn't happen. I also might notice now that my paint was really wet on its head. If that happens, kind of will, if I touch it, it blends into the background. That's okay. I could fix that by just painting over that yellow or just leaving it be. It's up to you. Got to the next bird. I'm going to do some of those yellow dots actually. Put some yellow dots around. Maybe make some go over in that orange. Wash it off, get more magenta, and keep going until I'm all done. carefully around that bird so we don't get too much orange in the background even though we might be adding some as we go. These birds are very close together so I might do part of this bird too. Making sure I don't have any white spots except for the whites of those eyes. Oops, so, so you see right here, here it's starting to get some of that blue it's because I touched my blue paint. Some more orange. And last bird. So as soon as you're done, you put it on the drying rack very, very carefully. You want to hold it flat 
so that the watercolor does not move, especially if your birds are still wet or your background is still wet because you don't want the two colors to mix inside your birds. You want to keep those birds very clean and the color you chose. The background, if that way goes around a little bit and doesn't go on your bird, it's fine. But you want to be careful. So I'm going to do some red dots around this one. That's why we don't want to touch the bird with the red because red and green make brown, if you remember that. All right, so then I carefully take it to the drawing rack. If you finish really early, you can make a second one. It is James Rizzi's painting, actually. He had a bunch of birds in a row. So he did at least six, but you would only have to do two. You could do three if you wanted to, and it would look really cool all together. All right, that's it.